So in this lecture, we are going to discuss the action potential in cardiac muscles. In the last few lectures, we have been uh, discussing the action potentials in the new nerve cells, action potential in the skeletal muscles, action potential in the smooth muscles. And now as we have started the cardiovascular system, so we are going to discuss the action potential in the cardiac muscles as well. So first of all, what is action potential? Action potential is basically a rapid wave of depolarization and repolarization along a membrane. It is a rapid wave of depolarization and repolarization, depolarization and repolarization across a membrane. We discussed in detail uh, in the depolar action potential in neuron and we discussed that basically depolarization is caused by the inward movement of sodium ion into the cell and then repolarization is caused basically by the um, movement of potassium ions outside the cell. So basically positive ions move inside the cell, it causes depolarization. The cells or the membrane become depolarized. It may be nerve, uh, membrane of a neuron, it may be membrane of skeletal muscle, it may be membrane of a smooth muscle. Similarly, it may be in the membrane of a cardiac muscle or heart muscle. But there is a slight difference. There is a slight difference between the action potential of the cardiac muscle and the action potential of the nerve cells, skeletal muscle and smooth muscles. We previously discussed that as soon as the sodium ions move inside the membrane of a neuron or a skeletal cell or the smooth, the potassium ions move out. And then is depolarization occur within a split second the repolarization occur so the as soon as the neuron the nerve cell has depolarized it is very rapidly followed by followed by a repolarization of the nerve cell same is the case in skeletal muscle but the story is little bit different in the cardiac tissue or the heart cells or the muscles of the heart here the action here in the action potential which is basically a wave of rapid wave of depolarization and repolarization here the depolarization occur very quickly but then the repolarization does not occur very quickly rather the depolarization stays for 0.2 seconds it stays for 0.2 seconds why is it so why the depolarization stays for 0.2 seconds and after that repolarization occur there is a simple explanation for this phenomenon. Normally in the heart muscles, cells of the uh, cardiac muscles, the intracellular membrane, uh, intracellular membrane potential, it rises from minus 85 to plus 20 in the action potential. It rises from the minus 85 to plus 20 in the depolarization. But once the depolarization has occurred, it stays for 0.2 seconds and followed by repolarization. It has to stay, the depolarization has to stay for 0.2 seconds. It has depolarized very quickly, but it stays here for 0.2 seconds, 0.2 seconds, 0.2 seconds. And this 0.2 seconds, this time is basically known as plateau. This is plateau. It, here the conditions remain the same and this plateau or this 0.2 second it causes the contraction of the cardiac muscle or the heart muscle to be to last 15 times more 15 times more as compared to this contraction of a skeletal muscle for example if the depolarization of the skeletal muscle is one second then the depolarization of the cardiac muscle is 15 seconds. So it is about 15 times more than the depolarization uh, of the skeletal muscle. And what's the significance? Why is it so? It's because we know that the heart is pumping the blood and during the pumping of the blood, the heart contracts, the blood removes, but heart does not relax rapidly. It it has to be contracted for a small period of time. For a certain period of time, it has to be contracted to allow the time to, so that the heart remains contracted for a small interval of time. This plateau has been added by the nature to the 
action potential of the cardiac tissue but how this plateau occurs how is how what is the molecular mechanism of this plateau so it is basically caused by two different two differences like there are two factors which causes this plateau in the cardiac muscle but will not cause this plateau to occur in the skeletal muscle or neuron cells or uh, smooth muscles in the smooth muscles we discussed we had two types of action potential a spike and a potential with a plateau there we had some types of smooth muscle in which plateau occurred but we had spike potential as well but mostly we do not have uh, plateau here it occurs normally in the skeletal and the neurons the depolarization occurs because of the fast sodium channels the channels for sodium ions they open they enter the cell inside the cell becomes positive the positivity goes inside and as soon as the channels get closed the potassium ions move outside and then the depolarization the depolarization gets finished and repolarization occur so the rapid movement of sodium ions cause a very rapid or speedy depolarization and then the rapid removal of potassium ions cause a rapid repolarization without causing a plateau that's the case in neurons or skeletal or some other type of membranes but in the cardiac tissue there are fast sodium channels fast sodium channels but along with the fast we have some slow calcium channels slow calcium channels in the skeletal muscles in the neurons we have only have fast sodium channels but in here in the cardiac tissue we have this slow calcium channels as well so in the depolarization process first the slow the fast sodium channels open and the sodium moves into the cells rapidly this is for example this is neuron and this is for example the cardiac tissue so sodium will rapidly enter here and this rapidly entering of the rapid entry of the sodium will cause a rapid depolarization but this rapid depolarization or rapid entry of the sodium will be followed by slow slow opening and slow entry of calcium slow entry and slow opening of the calcium channels when these slow calcium channels are opening the membrane remains depolarized because the calcium channels are opening 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 here they are opening 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 slowly 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 so that it has be is has maintained the depolarization in the skeletal in the skeletal muscles and in the neurons we had like depolarization and rapid repolarization but here depolarization occurred very rapidly but then the calcium channels are calcium is entering so the plateau has occurred so basic basically the plateau is occurring because in the cardiac tissue we have fast channels fast sodium channels as well as slow calcium channels the calcium channels are also known as slow sodium calcium channels because through these channels sodium also enters slowly and calcium is also coming slowly and that slow movement of the calcium brings basically it causes the plateau not only will the calcium cause plateau it will also help in contraction of the cardiac tissue in the case of skeletal muscles the contraction is caused by the calcium which was released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum but in case of cardiac tissue this calcium is not only causing the plateau not only is it causing a de increased depolarization but it is also helping in the contraction process another difference which also helps in the formation of plateau is the permeability of potassium as soon as the sodium starts entering this cardiac tissue the cardiac cells the permeability of potassium to go out it decreases the permeability decreases five times normally in the skeletal muscles in the neurons as soon as the sodium enters the permeability the potassium leaves the cell and 
depolarization is rapidly followed by a repolarization but in this case of skeletal muscle uh, cardiac in the heart muscles as soon as the sodium and calcium enters the permeability for the potassium decreases five times so the potassium is not allowed when it is not allowed this leads to the plateau now this is another method used by the nature to help the heart to remain contracted so that it gets so that all the blood get uh, go out of the uh, ventricular chambers so these are the two mechanisms the slow calcium channels along with the fast sodium channels and then the decrease in permeability for the um, removal or the going out of the potassium when the sodium and calcium are entering these two factors differentiate the, the action potential of cardiac tissue cardiac muscle from the action potential of smooth and uh, neural uh, nerve cells as soon as the sodium and calcium channel then decreases for example the entry of sodium and calcium decreases then the permeability of the potassium increases again potassium goes out and then repolarization occur so initially the the membrane intracellular membrane potential basically rises from minus 85 to plus 20 millivolt in the action potential of the cardiac muscles once the depolarization process has occurred it remains there for 0.2 seconds which brings the plateau this plateau increases the contraction time of ventricles about 15 times as compared to the contraction time of skeletal muscles there are two reasons behind the plateau the formation of plateau or for this 0.2 seconds in the cardiac muscles one is that along with the fast sodium channels we have some slow calcium channels so the fast movement of depolarization is caused by the fast entry of sodium but it is sustained by the slow entry of calcium and sodium through the slow calcium sodium channels and another factor is that when the sodium and calcium are entering the permeability for potassium to go out is decreased so these factors contribute to the plateau and the action potential of the cardiac muscles then we have another uh, another phenomena in the cardiac muscles uh, which was also present in the smooth muscles and the neurons and that is the refractory period once the action potential has occurred once the action potential has occurred during this time during this time or during a small period of time rapidly followed by this there can be no second contraction in the cardiac tissue so there for example a contraction has occurred in this time then in this specific time in this specific time there can be no contraction in the cardiac tissue this is known as the refractory period because the heart has one contracted it will has to wait for this much time after that another contraction will occur then we have two types of refractory period as we had two types of refractory period in the nerve cells one is absolute refractory period in which no amount of force can cause another contraction but then there is a relative refractory period in which if a, a stronger stimulus if a stronger stimulus applied to the heart it will give a contraction it will give a contraction so if this is the absolute refractory period then the relative refractory period will be a bit smaller as compared to this one so what is the refractory period in heart when the depolarization or and repolarization or the action potential is occurred in the cardiac muscle once then for a certain period of time which may be about 0 0.25 to 0 0.3 0 0.3 second in this time no a second contraction cannot occur so this refractive period has two type absolute refractive period and relative in the absolute no amount of force can cause another contraction but in a relative refractive period uh, if a nor more than usual uh, stimulus is applied to the heart during this time another 
contraction can be elicited then that will be known as a premature ventricular contraction pvc premature ventricular contraction so that's all about the action potential of the cardiac muscles and the refractive period of the cardiac muscles thanks a lot for watching the video